Hi guys, welcome to the vlog. Million here with you, M-I-L-L-I-A-N. I am the overseer of Dominion Fire, your resident iconoclast, firebrand provocateur, and ministry heretic. Resident heretic, I might add. Welcome to the vlog. Thanks for hanging out with me today. So, thank you first off for your comments and feedback on vlog volume one that we put out the other day. I asked for your feedback and what you thought of it and got a lot of nice responses and good positive feedback. Thank you guys for that. And we're gonna continue rolling through this and just uh, trying out some things and wait until we hit the sweet spot and uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So, what I wanna talk to you about today is something that's kind of been on my mind. We have a lot of stuff going on. We're gonna have a lot of things to talk about here. And a while ago, I went to a local church here in Vegas where they were, I know, me in church, right? Go figure. But it was a long time ago, so. But I was, uh, I was in church and they were doing uh, prayer over people and they were doing prophetic words. So I stepped up for a prophetic word at the time. And the pastor that spoke over me uh, had a great, great word for me. And he said, I'm paraphrasing that, I have the ability to take these really weird, complex and abstract concepts and explain them in a way where it makes sense to people. And I really appreciated that because that's kind of what I like to do. I like to use really stupid examples, like kind of silly explanations for things. And I hope that it resonates with people and that it makes your understanding a little easier and clearer on things. I don't have all the answers, but if I can give you a tool to get to the answer, then that's what I want to do for you. So it's been a, uh, well, quite frankly, it's been a miserable week. Had a lot of stuff happen, a lot of just terrible things in local life, national life, world life, you name it, just all kind of crap going on, and it's unfortunate. But it shouldn't surprise you. This is just what the world and what even believers have agreed to. This is what we've opted for. And there's fallout from stuff. You know, there's choices have consequences, and this is choices that people make. So, um, but I want you to stay encouraged um, because even though there's things going on in the world, maybe in your life that are not the best right now, that the kingdom of God is still being built and of the increase of his government and peace, there's gonna be no end. So you believe your word when it says that. What I wanna to talk to you about though is the concept today of trusting your gut. Now this tends to be a little bit of a rough area with a lot of churches and ministers and pastors and ministries and so on and so forth because you'll hear people say things like, well, we don't go by feelings here. Or, no, emotions have no role in what we do. And, all right, whatever. I find that foolish for a couple reasons. Number one, because, you know, God gave you these tools. He gave you the ability to feel emotions and you're made in his image. He gave you the ability to feel things and you're made in his image. And there's many scriptures where he felt emotions and he felt things and um, there's, there's tons of stuff like that. So I encourage you not to discount that kind of thing because someone in a church has said it. And the unfortunate part about that is that it's a very, it's a big influence from the Greek philosophy that's embedded in church life, unfortunately. And it's not always a good thing. So I would encourage you to use everything you have available to you, all your tools, whether it be you say, oh, we just go by the scripture. Good. Well, we go by feelings. Good. Use everything you got because I'm less about compartmentalizing things and more about working in fullness. You know, Ephesians 4, man, grow up into him in all things. And I think that if you do that, you're going to see a better result and you're going to see different things start to happen. So basically, don't curse the harvest. Don't curse all the tools you have. Don't pick some things over the other. Use every single weapon or tool or resource that you have available at all times. And I think you'll see a different thing. Don't be afraid is another thing too, because you know what? If you're truly operating from a position of God and you ask him for bread, he's not gonna give you stones. And I know a lot of people get paralyzed by fear that they don't wanna do certain things or explore certain things. And I just, again, encourage you, he's not gonna give you stones, guys. So trusting your gut is a huge thing and it's a huge topic with me for a couple reasons and I wanna share an example with you. With our ministry, we've had situations where, you know, we've been trying to put together a team, we've been trying to put together meetings, and it's been so inconsistent, and I just can't get commitment out of people. And if you're in ministry, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're a pastor, you feel me. Yeah, I know. We cool. But um, 
We've been doing this thing where every couple weeks we'll put out a date on the calendar and we'll say, okay, we're going to be here, we're going to be this time, somewhere in the town. If you need prayer, come talk to us. You want to come hang out with us. You want to do something. And we try to put these activities together and we text it out to people we know and to our team and nobody shows up and it is what it is. So this last one that we started putting together, I really didn't feel like going. I'm going to be very blunt with you. I said to my wife, let's just cancel it and I don't really feel like it. And, you know, my wife being Jiminy Cricket, you know, my conscience, she says to me, no, nah, I think we need to be there. I'm feeling prompted something's going to happen. And it's like, all right, she's getting a feeling about something and I want to be obedient to that. So it turns out that when we went to the event we had set up, it was a local coffee shop owned by a good friend of mine here in town who's also a believer in Christ. And we went there and someone showed up who we've been texting since the beginning, she finally shows up for an event, which was just weird to me because I wasn't expecting it, and brought two friends with her. And these two friends were a married couple, and the husband was in a really bad accident a month and a half prior where he was crushed between a brick wall and, and a huge delivery truck. So broken sternum, all the ribs in his upper body just busted, and his upper body was just a big mess. So miraculously, he's had a lot of people praying for him because they're, they're a Christian family, and uh, his recovery has been miraculous a month and a half and he's already up and walking around doing his thing and he came to this event and my wife started talking to him and said all right well let's pray for you so what was really cool is we set up the periscope app on my phone which is live video streaming so what was cool was we broadcast live uh, ministering to him getting his healing we trained two other people in how to do healing because i could train someone to, to minister healing in about 30 seconds it's really not that hard and four people prayed for him and by the time it was done he says to me he goes i don't know i'm feeling weird sensations and the pain in my back all left and if you saw the stream it was really cool so in a nutshell all the pain in his upper body left his range of motion was restored in his upper body and he could move around and he told me that he could breathe better because you know it's around your ribs and your lungs so we're kind of sitting around we're talking we're doing some prophetic word for people and we're just hanging out drinking our coffee and i start talking to him and he says to me he goes you know I feel good. Awesome, man. And I really wish I could go running. Okay, let's go running. And you know what? This guy didn't hesitate. He accepted his healing right there on the spot. So what we did is we went outside this coffee shop and it was at a strip mall and there was maybe 200 feet of just sidewalk and there were tables at the end and I said, okay, here's what we're gonna do. I said, I'm gonna broadcast this live. I said, we're gonna race. I said, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna say go. I'm gonna run with you to the end, touch that table, come back, let's see who wins. This guy dusted me. Now look at me, I'm not really a track star, I get that. But this guy had every bone in his upper body broken and he just wasn't having it. So he received his healing, he was outside running and he was done, he goes, man, that felt good. And I'm like, bro, this is an act of faith. And, you know, he really started embracing that after you receive ministry for healing, you have to take some kind of act of faith in a lot of cases to really see what it can do. And that's why when you minister healing, you'll say something like, whatever you couldn't do before, do now or try to move it around. There's a, a bit of an act of faith and faith is what makes things happen. So he got his healing. He was able to run and he was really impressed. And I told him, I said, you know, when you're ready, he said, come find me. He said, I'll train you. I said, uh, and it's time for some retribution. And he was all over that one. So it was, it was really nice. And, and it was a wonderful result happened. We broadcasted it live on Periscope. People prayed along with us on Periscope and they were watching us. So it was a really, really neat event. And I was ready to cancel it before it even started, but my wife was feeling the prompting. We trusted her gut reaction on this and it turned out to be amazing. Now what was cool is a few days later, I found out that this gentleman that got healed was just totally freaked out his wife because he was in his backyard on his trampoline doing flips to show everybody that God healed him. Now, of course, everybody else is flipping out, but he's just flipping, no pun intended, right? But he's sitting there flipping, jumping, doing his thing and uh, he's healed. He's fully embracing it and accepting it. So it was, uh, it was a really, really good thing to hear and it was the high point of this last week or two with all this crap going on. So I wanted to share that with you for two reasons. Number one, you have feelings, emotions, thoughts, you have these for a reason. And sometimes you may be looking at this the wrong way. So I encourage you to maybe reevaluate that. And number two is that when you're ministering healing for someone, um, a little faith goes a long way. And you know, we're not the type to really give up until somebody basically tells us to stop. So I would encourage you to trust your gut and go after stuff, a little bit of faith, and you'd be surprised what comes out of it. So go out there, man, go do it. Heal the sick, raise the dead, bind the brokenhearted. 
put God's goodness on display. That's what we do here at Dominion Fire. So please hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. Come hang out with me. We'll talk more. We got, like I said, we got a lot to talk about. A lot of subjects, a lot of things going on, and I just want to give you insight on things. So please hit the subscribe button so you can keep up on the updates. Anytime, visit our website at dominionfire.com, or you can follow me on Twitter slash Periscope at Healing Minister is my Twitter handle there, so make sure you check that out. We also have a Facebook page. Everything's on the website, so make sure you just check out there and also here on YouTube. So thanks for checking us out. Thanks for hanging with me. Now, go bless somebody.